In this course, you will learn how to use React Native to build a sophisticated macOS app that allows users to search and explore books using the Google Books API and manage their personal bookshelves. You'll also implement AI-powered summaries and ensure smooth navigation and state management. By the end, you'll have a fully integrated app with advanced features and understand how to build your own macOS applications. Brijan McGuana developed this course. He's an experienced developer and course creator. Hey everyone, in this video, we'll be building a book management macOS app using React Native. So let me give you a quick demo. You can search for any of the book. We are pulling the data from Google Books API, and we are also integrating the React Navigation for multiple screen support. You can add this book in your book cell. So we are using Zustank for managing the state across our app. At the bottom, you get this AI summary. We are also implementing the Google Generative AI to get the AI summary. And on top of that, we will be using the Tensor Query to manage all our loading and error state as well. As you can see, you get the AI summary. In the back, you will get the book cell screen. Here, you can manage all of your books, even if user reload the app. We won't lose our data because we are storing them locally as well. So without any further delay, let's get started. So to create a React Native project for Mac OS, you need two things on your Mac. So first open your browser and search for Node.js. Download the Node.js. All right, once it's download, just open the package. Continue. And install. All right, so the package is successfully installed. Just minimize the browser. The second thing that you need is the Xcode. So open App Store and search for Xcode. You can ex you can install the Xcode from here. So that's the only two requirement for this project. Now come back to the browser. And now let us search for the React Native Mac OS. All right, so this is the main uh, GitHub repo. It's from the Microsoft and it's actually a fork of React Native. So let us go to the documentation. Here, build for macOS. All right, let us copy this command to initialize our project and open your terminal. Move to the folder where you want to initialize this project and paste this command and don't forget to write your project name. Let me write book app. It will take some time. Do you want to install cocoa ports now? So you can opt for the no at the moment. We will do that later. And once your project is initialized, you can just open it on any code editor of your choice. You can use VS Code. I'm using Z. All right, so this is our project. Come back to the documentation. Now we want to install the macOS extension. This part is most important. So just run this command. And if you encounter the same error, just scroll through the error and copy this command right over here. And run this without the S flag. Just remove the S flag and run the command. Now run the command to install the macOS extension again.
As you can see, it's successfully installing all the dependencies. If we come back to the browser, this is the command to run the app. So we will just copy this and go to the packet.json and we will add one more script mac and paste it over here all right let me save this and now to run the project yarn mac okay so it started the metro bundler as you can see over here and here we have our first mac os app as you can see it's running natively on our mac os so come back to the code editor so i'm going to close the app for the moment while we make some breaking changes all right so first we will create a source folder let's name it src and move this app.txx file into src folder delete everything create a new folder let's name it screens at the moment we only have one screen uh, and later on the video we will implement the react navigation to support multiple screens so let's name our first screen as home screen and let's export a react native component you can use snippets for it all right let's create some styles let's create a style called container it will be flex one so it covers the entire screen and let's provide the background color all right it will be a dark background All right, currently it's giving us the ESLint error for the self-closing element. So we will fix that in a moment. Let's first close it. And in the app.txs file, this is the main file that render on our screen. We will simply return the home screen here. All right, let's go to the index.js file. Here, let's import it from the SRC app. All right, that's it for now. Yan Mac. And let's run it again. Reload. All right, as you can see, we have nothing at the moment. All right. All right, let's create our first custom component search bar. In the SRC folder, create a new folder called components. We will put all our custom component in this folder and create a new file called search bar.tsx. and export a react component
let's go to the home screen here we render our search search bar component let's save it and let me put the screen side by side let's import text input to take user inputs provide some style over here Style store container. Let's say style dot input. Style set dot create and the container. All right, we can't see anything yet. Alright, in the input, let's provide the background color white. As you can see, we have our text input. Let's provide some padding. Let's say 15. Alright, now we can see. Let's increase the font size to 15. Let's add the color black all right this is our input let's provide some placeholder text search books and let's provide the styling for the placeholder placeholder text color will be black all right now let's import pressable using pressable we can create buttons let's add the text let's say search let's add style of button here yeah, let's say button text all right here we have button let's provide some padding horizontal let's say 15 let's add the background color you can add any color you want all right we want these both component in the same row so let's provide text direction row and this text input will basically Take the whole entire space available so let's add text one all right all right now let's add some padding to the entire container let's say 15 okay that looks good and add some gap over here as well let me reload this one all right let's add some border radius of let's say 10 maybe 15 all right that looks good and in the button let's say uh, align items center and justify content is center let's increase the font size to let's say 15 
and I font weight to make it a little bit bold. Let's use text transform to capitalize. All right. Let's add some border radius of five. Let's say we want to add it to the button container. All right. Let's increase this gap to twenty and. Here in the button, let's add fading horizontal to 20. And we decrease the border radius again. All right, so now we have our first custom component for the search bar. Here we can search for the book. All right. All right, now let's talk about the Google Books API go to your browser and search for google books api integrate with the google books repo come to the using the api so here is the documentation for using the google books api we don't really need the api key for authorization we can make the request without it and if you just scroll down here we have the api endpoint that we are interested in so let's test this api key let's come to the postman postman is a tool uh, which allows us to test the apis just logged in with your account you will get a dashboard like this let's create a blank collection let me name it book mac os app and let us create a request add request search books and let us copy this api endpoint and paste it over here as you can see it picked up the parameters it has one parameter called q here let's pass the book title let's say clean code and send a request as you can see we are getting back the data under the items it's an array of object and each object is represent a book it has id volume info under the volume info we have title subtitle authors description etc so this is the information that we need to show in our app so now come back to your browser and go to your home screen now let's create a state to store whatever user enters in the search bar for that we will create a state called let's say query set query and we will use use state hook initial value will be empty string if we save this and if you hover over this query you can see that it has the type of string because we have provided the empty string here but if you want you can explicitly provide string like that but it's not a requirement typescript infers the value from the initialization that we have created all right so let's pass this query and set query to our search bar let's say value will be query and set value function will be set query now let us modify the search bar to provide the props it will take props and the type will be i search bar i prefixed it with i because we are going to create an interface but if you are comfortable with type you can also create a type interface i 
search bar at the moment it will have two types value will be let's say string and set value if you go back to the home screen and hover over this you can find the type of the set query so we can use that it has react dot dispatch react dot set action and the type will be string you don't need to memorize this you can just find out from here just hover over the element and you will see its type all right and props let's destructure it over here value and set value So our value will be the query and whenever user changes the text we want to set it to the query. So we will pass the set value over here. Alright. Now let's install a library called Axios. You can also use fetch to make the API calls. Simply do yarn add axios. All right. Now let's create a function which will make the call to the books API. Let's name it search books. It will be an async function. All right axios dot get here we will pass the api endpoint so if we go back to the postman here is our api endpoint and we will provide the query in params And the query will be this query state that we have just created. And simply return the data. But, but if you see this in Postman, the data holds this one object. But we are not interested in that object, we are interested in the items array. So we will actually return. response dot data dot items and since it's it's an async function we will have to await it let me save this all right now it's fine now if you want you can pass this function down to the search bar and call it on this button click but we, we don't want to do that because uh, if we do that we have to create a state ourselves uh, let's say books and store all the data in that books and we have to manage the error and loading state as well so what we're going to do is that we will be using a library called tenstack query it will take care of all the states and it also provides the caching functionality so let's come back to the browser and search for stand stack query. All right, read the docs. Go to the installation. Here you can see the yarn command. Just copy this and paste it over here. It will install the React query, which is also known as the stand stack query. If you go to the quick start. These are the import that we will need. So simply copy this. All right. 
now go to the app.txs file which is our entry file and paste the import here as you can see we need to create a query client so let's just copy this and create a query client after that we have to wrap our entire app in this query client so let's just do that And in here we will render our home screen so now our entire app has the access to the query client now let's get back to the home screen now let's import the use query hook and we will call this hook here Now let's pass down the query key. Now query key is very important while using the use query because it based on these keys, it provides the caching feature in your app. It takes an array of string. So we will pass the query itself as the key. Then the query function, the function that we want to call, we want to call the search books function. And now if you save this code, it will fire up these function search books as soon as this component mounts onto your screen. But we don't want that. We want to manually trigger it. So you can provide the enable as false. Now it returns data and it also returns the refresh function so that we can manually trigger our query. Now we can pass down this refresh function in search bar all right now let's go to the search bar and make necessary changes in the props it's a function let's destructure it over here let's call it whenever user press enter while typing over here on submit editing we will call this function and in the pressable we will pass the on press event all right back to our home screen let's just console log the data as of now all right let's search for clean code and if i press enter Hopefully we will see the data in our terminal and here is our list of books. Now if you take a look at our home screen component here, it's basically responsible for the data fetching and the rendering of this component as well. So ideally you should always separate your data fetching logic and for that we are going to create a custom hook. So in your SRC folder create a new folder called hooks in that create a new file called let's say you search and make sure that whenever you create a custom hook it always start with the use keyword because that's how react is going to know that it's a custom hook all right Let's export it. Now what we need to do is then copy this entire code and move this in view search. All right. Now first let's fix the import setter. All right if you see we are getting the error of query because we have defined the query state in home screen so we need to pass that as an argument query let's say it's a string let me just save this 
and we don't want to destructure it over here we simply want to return the entire result the use query return us all right come back to the home screen we don't need this function here anymore and we don't need to call the use query hook over here as well we can simply call the use search it takes query as an argument delete these imports as well let me save this come back to the terminal all right now if i search for the books let's say make time as you can see we are still getting the same result but if you look at our code it looks much cleaner now now if you hover over the data you can see that our data has any type let's fix that because we haven't provide our proper types in the function let's create a new folder called types create an index file and let's provide a type over here let's export it the ibook you can also create the type i'm using the interface all right to provide the properties that ibook will have you can simply go back to the postman and you can just refer to this data structure over here it has id it has volume info under the volume info we have title authors authors is an array of string we have the description we have page count etc all right so let's start with the id it has a string volume info it's an object it has a title it will be of type string we have authors of array type of string let's say average rating it will be of type number we have description of type string if you look at this we have image links and we have the thumbnail so we will use this thumbnail over here image links it's an object and we have thumbnail which will be a string we will use this image for our book and lastly we have page count as of now we will be using these properties in our book component but we will add more types uh, as we progress in the video so come back to our use search hook here in the search books function let's say since it's an async function it returns a promise and our data type of this item is the array of books so let's say ibook and it's an array let me save this now if you go back to the home screen and hover over to data as you can see it has proper type now it has a type of ibook so this is how we can provide the types for the data now let's create a component so go to your components folder create a new file let's name it book item all right import react let's just return a view make sure to import everything from react native export default book item now Let's render this book item component in our home screen. All right. Now let's create a style set. Dot create. 
here let's provide the styles we will provide the container we will create it in the later part so first we will have an image of the book so for that let's import the image component it will take a source and we need to pass in the uri let's use our dummy data as of now so you can go to unsplash to find the images let's search for books and you can get any of the books from here let me take it this one pass it down over here let's provide the style all right In the container list first provide some padding time and image let's provide the width of 200 let's say and height is about 270 as you can see our image is visible here let's provide some border radius let's say 10 no let's say 5 all right all right let's create another view in this view basically we will display all the information regarding the book Let's name this info. Here use the text component to show the title of the book. Let's say the title of the book is clean code. Let me save this and you can see we have clean code over here. All right, let's provide some style. It will be title. Now we want all the book information in the same row as this book image. So what we will do is that in the container we will provide the flex direction row. Let's provide some gap. Let's set 20. This is our info. Let's make this title a little bigger. So provide font size. Let's set 22. Font weight 500. Let's make it capitalize. Now let's show the author. If you remember in our book interface that author is not a string, it's an array of string. So we will have an array of string here. Let's provide the array. Let's say Robert Martin. Whatever the array we will have, we will join that. So it will convert the array into a string and we will join it with the comma. Let me save this. Let's provide this style. Authors. Let's increase the font size. Let's say 16. Let's change the color. You can provide any color you want. All 
all right in the info let's provide some gap let's say 12 all right so there's a gap between each component in this info container so we have the title we have the authors we are not showing the rating at the moment because we haven't added the support for icons in our app yet so we will do that once this component is finished so let's show the page count let's say 350 pages let's create pages font size will be let's say 15 let's copy this and we will display the description here Let's set the font size 16 as well. All right. For the description, let's search for the book in code and copy the description. You can write anything over there. We are just using some dummy data. All right. It's going out of the screens because we want that info container will take the entire space available. So let's provide text one over here and we are good to go. Now we can go to the home screen and release this book item component. All right, now let's make some changes to the book item so it will take the props. The type will be ibook that we have created earlier. Let's destructure all the properties. We have the ID, we have the volume info, and in the volume info, we will have all the information that we need over here. Let's say volume info. First, we require the image. So, image will be in the image links. In the URI, you can provide the image links. Dot. It will have a thumbnail. Now, not all the images will come with the image. It might be undefined for some of the books. So, for that, we will pass the default image URI. So, if the thumbnail is not available, it means that if the thumbnail is undefined, then image component will use this URI to show the image. Now, second we need is the title we can show the title over here then we will have the authors all right then we have the page count and last we will have the description all right we are good to go now let's use blacklist component from react native as the name suggests uh, we use the flat list to render a list first we need to provide the data itself it should be an array then what we want to render render item it gives us the item this item represent each element from the data array so we just need to render the book item now we need to pass all the properties that the item object holds so we will use the spread operator to pass all the elements as well all right 
item. Now the third prop is key extractor. So each element in the data array must have a unique key so that React can provide the caching functionality under the hood. So in our case, each book has a unique ID. Let me save this and provide some styling as well. Let's say padding of 10 and gap of 5. Now let me search for a book. Let's say make 10. As you can see, we are getting the data. One problem though is that the description is too long. Let us fix that. In the description, we can provide the number of lines. Let's say 5. All right. Now let's also create a divider component so we can render that in between each of the book. In the components, let's create a new file called divider.tsx. All right. It will be a simple line. Let's return a React component and let's use a view from React Native. We can self close it and let's provide some style. Let's name it container and let's create the style sheet. Right. let's provide the height of just one background color you can provide anything you want let me provide the white let's give the width of 95 percent and we want this to be center so align cell will be center Let's export it. All right, so in the home screen, we can provide item separator component and we will divide up for that. So if I save this, as you can see, we get the divider in between each of the book. All right. Now let us add the support for icons in our app. For that you need to close the app. Alright, come to the browser and search for React Native Vector Icons. This is the package that we are going to use. So come to your code editor and run this command to add the React Native Vector icons and their types. Now, if you scroll down to the docs, so browse through your node modules and find the React Native Vector icons. All right, navigate to your project and find out. First, open the macOS folder and open this xcode file in your xcode all right now as suggested in the docs go to your node modules find the react native vector icons folder here it is and here you will find a fonts folder Here it is. All right, just drag this folder into your book app. And select book app macOS, not the iOS, and create folder references.
Now open the info file, just copy this one. Under book app macOS, open the info file. Right click over here, add new row and paste. Application fonts resource path. And for the value, just type fonts. All right, that's it. Just save your file and close Xcode. Now open your code editor. Now we will run our app, Yarn Mac. All right, you can come to your browser and use React Native Vector icons. Explore all icons. Here you can search for any icon you want. We want the star for the rating. It's provided from the end design and the icon name is star. All right. Come back to your code editor. Go to the book item. Import the icon from React Native Vector icon. Here, just type the end design. You don't need the color braces. All right. Let's use this here. Icon name is star. Let's provide the color. It will be yellow. Let's provide the size. Let's say 20. Let me save this. All right. If we search for any book, as you can see, we have successfully integrated the icons in our project. So Let's display the average rating as well after the author. Average rating. Now, not all the books might have the rating, so we only want to display the rating if it's available. So, let's do average rating, and if it's not undefined, then let's create a view. And under this view, let's copy this and paste it over here. Let's provide the text. Here we will display the average rating. Let's provide some style. Styles dot, let's say rating container. And the text. Let's say rating. All right. Rating container. We want these to be displaying the same row. So let, let's say text direction will be row. Align items to be center. Let's provide some gap of let's say 5. And provide the rating as well. Let's say font size will be 15. Let me save this and if you look at this, as you can see the clean code has 5 rating. The clean code in Python doesn't have a rating so it doesn't render it here. Let's search for another book. Let's say Atomic Habits. All right, here is the rating. Now let's add the icon in search as well. Just type search. We can use from the feather. Go to your search bar. Let's just copy this from the book item.
color will be white let me say this all right we have the icon and let's provide us some style in the button let's say flex direction will be row and let's provide some gap maybe 10 all right so we have added the icons in book item and search bar as well now let's add multiple screen support in our app this project doesn't have any inbuilt navigation system so we are going to use the react navigation library search for react navigation there are multiple dependencies that we need to install first of all copy this and install scroll down installing dependency into a bare react native project copy this command as well all right now come to the hello react navigation and add the stack navigator as well stack navigation basically means that whenever we navigate from one screen to another all of that screen will be stack on top of each other all right here is the example let's follow it import these dependencies open your app.tsx file and paste it over here now we need to create a stack navigator paste it over here as well now this is the navigation container that will handle all our navigation just remove the home screen don't save your code just yet because you have to go to the navigators you can see we have two type of stack navigators one is stack second is native stack so we are going to use the stack one all right install this as well now install the react native jesla handler all right just copy this import and instead of create native stack navigator we will be importing the create stack navigator and use that here yeah, as well all right now if we have save our code you can see we are already seeing the header now we don't require header in our app so in here you can provide screen options let's say header shown false all right now let's create our second screen in screens folder create a new file let's name it book screen import react we will simply return a react component And create a view let's export it let's provide some styling let's create object called container let's do flex one and for the background color we will be using same as the home screen so let me just copy from that let's provide this here all right if you go to the app.tsx file here yeah, now we can create our second screen that will be book screen and name of the screen will be book all right so we have created our second screen 
Now let's navigate from the home screen to this book screen. Let me just add the text over here so that we can know that we are on the second screen. Let's say book screen. All right. Now, if I go to the app and search for any book, let's say clean code. So whenever user click on any of the book, we want them to redirect to the book screen. So let's go to the book item. Here we have view. To add the on press event, we need a pressable. So let, let's replace it with the pressable. All right. Now we need to create a navigation object. Honest. Navigation is equal to, we can use the use navigation hook. Now, on press event, we will provide a function. Let's say navigation, then we can use navigate. And here we need to provide the route name. As you can see, the route name is book. Let's say book. Let me just save this. All right. Now, if I click on the clean code, as you can see, we are redirected to the book screen. So whenever user click on any of the book, we need to pass the book ID from the book item to the book screen so that in book screen we can use the book ID to make request to the Google Books API to fetch the information regarding that specific book. So come to the, your navigation and here we can pass the book ID. And what we need to pass is the ID. All right. Currently, we are getting these TypeScript errors, but don't worry about it. We will fix that soon. Now, we want to receive it in book screen. Here, we will use another hook called use route. All right. Now, we can destructure it from the route dot params. book id let's add question mark because it can be undefined because we haven't provided proper types yet let me save this and here in the book screen let's say book id and display the book id as of now let me save this in your app search for any of the book let's say deep work and if i click as you can see, we are successfully getting our ID here. All right. Now let's come back to the browser and search for Google Books API again. Using the API. So previously we have used this API endpoint to perform a search. It returns a set of books, but now at the moment we need only one book. So scroll down, retrieving a specific volume. So we are going to use this API endpoint. It takes a book ID and returns the information regarding the specific book. All right. Now close everything and go to the hooks folder. We will create a new hook called use book, which will be responsible to fetching the data for a specific book. All right. Now it will take a book ID as an argument, which will be string. Let's export it. All right, now let's create a function. Let's say uh, get. Now it will be an async function.
we will use Axios. Here we will use this string interpolation and instead of the volume ID, let's provide the book ID and we will return response.data. We can also provide the return type. It's an async function so it returns a promise with the type of book. So we can use the book interface. All right, now we will use the use query and simply return the result. First, we need to provide the query key, which will be book ID. And second is query function. We want to execute the get book. All right, it looks good. Now let's go to the book screen. Here, once we get the book ID, let's make a request to use book book, passing the book ID. It returns the data. It also returns the is fetching. It's a property that will be Boolean. And if any error, we get the error scene. All right. So if our data is currently fetching, so we can type a condition over here. We will return a loading state. Let's import the activity indicator from React Native. We can pass the color as well. If we get any error, Let's just show the text. And finally, let's console log the data. We are getting these yellow warnings. It's because of the ES lint and we will fix that some. All right. Now let's go to the home screen because we also have a console log there. Let me just remove this and go to your terminal clean everything in your book app let's search for book deep work all right if i click on deep work and go to the terminal you can see we are successfully getting the data from google books api all right now if you can see we are getting some es lint over here and over here to fix that go to your dot eslint file and here just simply paste this line of code it will take care of it all right all right we don't have that errors anymore all right let me make the project and the app side by side All right, now let's go to our book screen and work on that. Here first, we need to render the scroll view instead of the view so that we can get the scroll bars. And we also want to provide the padding and gap. Now we cannot use that property with style. For that, we need to pass the contents container style. Let's provide some inline style. Let's say padding 15. Gap will be 15 as well. And remove the steps. Now we can go from home screen to the book screen, but we don't have any way to go back to our home screen so let's create a back button we will create a custom component because we will require to use that component at multiple places let's say go back dot tsx
let's create a pressable let's export this component and render it over here all right we can use an icon so go to your browser and search for react vector icons we can search for symbol for back you can use any of the symbol let us use this one all right import the icon from react native vector icons and display it over here let's copy the name actually use this one now we can provide the size let's say 25 and we can provide the color as well let me save this as you can see we have this let me increase the size let's say 40 50 perhaps all right let's give it 45 let's provide this style in pressable let's create a style sheet We only need to pass the align cell flex R so that it only covers this much area, otherwise, it will cover the entire width. And to go back, we will use the navigation, use navigation hook. navigation dot go back now if we press on this all right we are back to the home screen let's search for another book let's say clean code all right it works fine let's come back to the book screen now we are creating this data from these book hook so we can use this data to render the book item component since it's a custom component we can reuse it data now one problem is that we don't want to render the description over here so what we can do is that we can render it conditionally let's go to the book item let's create another interface let's say i book item and this one extends the i book in typescript an interface can extend another interface so this i book item interface will have all the properties from the i book and additionally we can provide another items so let's add its description property it will be of type boolean let me save this and it will be an optional property yeah let's say ibook item here we can provide since it's an optional property we can provide the default value over here 
and the default will be true so if user don't specify any uh, value for this description property then we will render the description but if we pass the is description value as false then we don't want to render the description let's come back over here provide the condition so only render the description if the if description property is true so currently the default value is true but if we go to the book screen here we can provide the a description value to be false as you can see now we don't have the description in the book screen but we have that description in the home screen one more thing is that in the home screen we want to allow user to click on this book item component but on the book screen we don't want to allow the users because user cannot navigate from this one to the book screen because we are already on the book screen so to do that let's go back to the book item and provide another property let's say it's pressable it will be also optional property and by default it will be also true so by default user will be allowed to click on the book item and here in pressable we can pass a property called disabled so we want to disable it whenever user pass the whenever user pass the true then we don't want to disable it because the opposite of that will be false all right let's go back to the book screen here if i press the pressable as false in book item it will become true so it will be disabled so if i go back to the home screen and i click on this i'm allowed to click on this but it will won't work here all right now let's close everything and add some more properties to our book interface so on book screen we want to display the categories they basically represent the genre of the book they are of type array of string then we have the publisher of type string then we also have the publish date for the book it is also type of string then we have a preview link so we want to allow user to view the information about the book outside of the app as well now let's remove this console from here and restructure everything from data now we can provide here the exclamation mark and by providing this mark we are telling the typescript that we know for sure that there will be data available first let's restructure the categories and work with it let's first create a view and we will map through the categories array let's name it category we'll also get the index and let's render text text will be category let me save this and here we need to pass the key since uh, categories will not be updated once it's mounted onto the screen we can use the index as the key 
If you save this, here we are getting the genre of the book. Now let's add some style to the categories view. Let's add some style in text as well. Let's create the styles. All right, let's do flex detection row. As you can see, it's going out of this thing. So we want to wrap that. We can use flex wrap to wrap. All right, let's provide some game of let's say five. All right, let's do category. Let's first provide the font size, let's say 13. Let's provide the font weight, let's say 500. All right, let's provide some border width. Padding horizontal and padding vertical as well. And let's provide some border radius of let's say 10. Let's change the border color. Let's change the color of the font as well. All right, let's provide the gap 10. As you can see, we are getting this really nice category over here. All right. Now let's work with publisher and publish date. We want to show the publisher of the book and the publish date so we can write published by and the name of the publisher on then we can display the publish date now to format the publish date uh, we can use another library called moment so install the library Import it or get off. Here we can use the moment library. Publish date and you want to format it. You can see the documentation to see various format offered by the moment. As you can see, published by the publisher name and the date. Let's provide some style. Publisher. Let's just add the font size of 13. Maybe 15. All right. Let me go back to the screen. Search for another book. Let's say deep work. As you can see, we are uh, now showing the categories, publisher, and the publish date as well. Now let us structure the preview link. Now let's create a button for this preview link. Pressable. Let's add a text. Let's say view. And we will call a function. We'll be using a module called linking dot 
coupon url is the function and we will pass the preview link since it's an async function we need to await let me save this so now whenever user click on this button a new browser window will be open in the book google books and we have the information about that specific book all right now let's go back and search for another book let's say plain code as you can see all right let's provide some styling let's say button button text let's add some border width border color let's add a line cell text start Padding horizontal, let's say 15. Padding vertical, let's say 10. Let's add some border radius as well. All right, now button text. Font size 15. Font weight of 500. let's make the text capitalize all right now let's add an icon over here import icon from react native vector icons go to your browser and search for react native vector icons let's search for link and we can use this one name will be external link Let's provide a color. Let's give some size. Let's say 20. All right. In the button, let's make the flex direction row and have some gap of 10. And align items center as well. All right. It looks fine. Now let's destructure the description. If we use a simple text to display the description, you can see uh, the description has multiple HTML tags, so we can actually use these HTML tags. Go to a browser and search for HTML, the actually React Native HTML render. All right. The package name is React Native Render HTML. It will help us to render the HTML. So copy this yarn command and install the library. Now let's follow the docs. We first need to import the use window dimension hook from React Native. Then we need to get the width out of it. All right. Now let's import this component.
and we can use this now if you take a look here at the source it has our object and this object has a property of html so we need to follow that so in the source let's pass an object html property and the value will be description here let me save this as you can see now we are getting this list and some of that the font are actually bold so we are getting this from this package all right let's search for another book let's say deep work Over here, here as well, we are getting some styling as well. Now let's provide proper types in all our routes. So go to the types. Let's create another type for our route. Let's name it stack param list. All right. So the first route that we have is the home. And the type will be undefined undefined because whenever we navigate to the home screen it doesn't require to pass any arguments so it doesn't expect any parameters the second one is the book and it expect a parameter called book id which is of type string let me save this now go to the app.tsx file here in the angular brackets we need to provide that type all right now if i let's say just remove this it actually suggests me that we can provide the book type over here so we are getting the type script working all right let's go back to the book item now let's create a type here book screen navigation prop Here we need to import the stack navigation prop. Alright, in angular brackets, first need to provide the types for the params. Stack param list. Now from the book item component, we are actually going to the book screen. So here we pass the book. Let me save this. And here in the angular brackets, we can provide this type. All right, the er TypeScript error is gone. If we hover over to the book ID, it's properly typed now. It has a type of string. Now let's provide the type in route as well. So let's go to the book screen. Here we are getting the TypeScript error for book ID. All right. Let's create book screen route prop. Here we need to import the route prop. Here as well, we need to add the stack param list. And after that, since the this is the route for book screen, here we pass the book. In the use route hook we can provide this book screen route prop and now we don't need this All right let me save this now if you hover over this book id we have the proper uh, type of string now let's implement a drop down picker so that user can select from various book cells go to your browser and search for react native drop down picker Here is the package that we'll be using. You can go to the home page and copy the yarn command to install the package in your project. Now you can go to the usage and they have a really nice example that we can copy. So go to your code editor let's create a custom component in components folder let's name it select book cell
if we come to this let's copy this much and return a react component all right we need to import the use state and we also need to import the drop down picker all right let me save this and export it so what it does is that it has three states first is the simply holds the value for the open so it uh, determines if our book cell drop down picker is open or not then we have the selected value and then we have a list of items that we want to render it has apple and banana all right we will change that in the future first let's render it in book screen As of now, let's uh, render it just after the preview link. Save this. All right, here is our drop down picker. If you try to open it, uh, we get a warning from the scroll view component. So, to fix that, come to your select book cell component and you can provide the list mode as scroll view. Right now, you can select any of the value as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Now, let's provide a couple of more prop. Let's say placeholder, select book cell. All right, if you go back. As you can see, we are getting the placeholder to select book cell. Let's provide some style. And let's create a style sheet for it. We only want to control the width of the overall container. Currently, it's the width is taking the entire width of the application. So let's create container. Provide the width of let's say 300. All right, it's fine now. Now let's change the data. We want to render three book cell. So first one is the want to read second one is the read let's copy this and the final one will be currently reading all right now we want to change the value as well so the first one will have a value of zero Second one will have one, and the last one will have two. Now, the problem with providing the value like this is that we require to use these values at multiple places, so it's very error prompt. Even if we make mistake in one of the values, the result will change drastically. So, what we do is that we will create an enum for that. Enum is basically a group of constant let's name it let's name it book cells okay so the first book self is the want to read second one will be read and the third one will be currently reading Now by default, the first element will have the value of 0, 
the second one will have one and so on but if you want you can provide the value manually here you can also provide the string value over here but we leave it as it is so for the want to read we can just type bookshelves dot want to read this way we don't have to remember which value belong to which book set all right as you can see we are getting our three book cells now let's move it from here to here for that go back to the book screen let's create a view and this view will wrap the back button and the drop down picker let's provide some styling let's say header let's create header we want them in the same row so flex direction will be row now you will encounter an issue if you try to open it as you can see our book component is take over to the drop down picker so to fix that go to your book item and you can provide the z index minus 1 as you can see now it works perfectly fine go back to your book screen let's do a line item center and justify content space between all right now it's rendering at the end of the screen all right now if you open this you can see we are getting this tick icon now let's customize this and provide our custom icon let's create a component Called tick icon and we will use icon from the react native vector icons so let's import it all right go to your browser search for react native vector icons you can use any of the icons let me search for check All right let's use n typo all right so the icon name is check you can provide the color let's provide the size let's say 20 and we can render it over here as tick icon component Let me save this. It's a React component. So export is a React component. All right. Now we are rendering our custom tick icon component. Now let's create our next screen, which will be bookshelf screen. So go to the screens folder and create a new file. Let's name it bookshelf screen. all right let's export a react component and let's render a simple view export it Let's provide some simple styling. Create a style sheet. Now 
let's name it container flex will be one so the screen covers the entire space available and let's provide the background color similar to the home screen so let me just copy from there and provide it over here all right let me save this all right now we need to add a route in our types we already have two routes let's add the third one book cells it will be undefined because we won't be passing any arguments there now let's go to the app.tsx file and add another route over here it will be book self screen and name will be book cells all right now let's add a button over here so that user can actually navigate to the book self screen for that let's create a component and let's name it go to book cells We do, the same, we do the same and we will actually render a simple pressable with an icon. Pressable. Let's export it. all right now come back to the browser and let's search for an icon called book self we can use this icon from material community icons now let's import the icon from react native vector icons and we will copy this one paste it here all right now let's render the icon the name will be book self let's provide the color let's add the size let's say 45 let me save this now let's render this component in home screen let's create a view which will be wrapping component for the search bar and the go to book cells button let's move it all right let's provide some style let's name it header and create it over here we want them in the same row so flex direction will be row all right we want the search bar to take the entire space so let's go to the search bar add flex and remove the padding from here because we'll be adding the painting to the entire header component all right as you can see let's add some gif All right, now let's add the navigation to this button. Let's create a navigation object. Using use navigation hook. And the on press event, we will simply pass and function. Navigation dot navigate. And the route name is book cells. It's giving us the TypeScript error, so let's fix that. We will do the same as we did with the book screen. Let's name it book self screen prop. Let's 
we need to import this tech navigator prop here let's pass this tech param list it holds all our available routes and since we are navigating to the book cells let's pass the book cells over here let me save this and let's use this in use navigation hook as you can see the error is gone now if we ever go to the book app and let's press on it we are now on the book self screen now on the book self screen we need to render the segmented buttons look it looks like this so we will showcase all the available book cells we have free phone to read read and current to reading and user can toggle between them so if you go to the select book cell we have created an array it holds all the book cells so we can actually reuse it let's create a separate variable for it and export it let's copy this paste it over here and we can use that here all right now we can go to the book self screen now let's create a state to keep track of the currently selected book cell let's name it selected book cell And we will use this state now for the initial value we have created the enum if you recall here is the enum we have all the book cells here so we can use that book cells dot red all right now let's come to the components folder and create a new file let's name it segmented buttons all right let's export a react component from here And return a simple view at the moment all right come to the book cell screen here we want to render our segmented buttons all right so the first thing that we need to pass here is the array that we have created in the book cell book cells array let's name it buttons and book cells the second thing will be the selected book cell and the set selected book cell let's now name it value and pass this selected book cell and for the setter function will pass this let me save this now let's fix the typescript errors because we haven't created any interface all right props let's name it i segmented buttons you can also create a type instead of interface all right so the first thing we have is the buttons It's simply an array and each element has one of each element has one property called label and one property called value so let's create another interface for that let's name it I segmented button the first will be label which is string and value is actually book self enum 
and here in the buttons it's an array of i segmented button all right the next thing is the value value holds the book cells enum and set value if you hover over this you will find its type so just copy that it's react dot dispatch set state action and the type will be book cells all right now the structure all the props here now all the book cells that we want to render on the screens are present in this button setting so what we can do is that we can use javascript map function to map through each element and render a pressable let's render a pressable inside that pressable let's render a text so each text for each text we can actually render the label and we need to pass the key because we are, we are using the map function and in this situation we can use the index all right if you see we are rendering these three book cells let's provide some styles first the view let's name it container in the pressable let's name it button and the text button text let's create style set for that So we want them in the same row. So let's provide text direction row. And let's provide the entire component as aligned self center. Now let's provide the button. Let's say width is 170. Provide some fade in vertical of 10. All right. Let's provide some border width as one and border color as well. All right. Let's come back to the book cell screen. As you can see, we don't have a back button over here. So let's import that. We have already created the back button. We can just reuse that. And let's wrap this two component in a view. And let's provide the style header. Let's simply give some padding of 15. All right. Let's provide some gap of let's say 10. All right, it looks good. We can go back to the home screen from here. In the segmented buttons, for the button, let's say align items center. Now let's provide some styling for the button text. Increase the font size, let's say 15, and provide some font weight as well. All right, now whenever user click on any of the button, we need to set that value into this value state. So, in the pressable, let's pass the on press event. Whenever user presses on it, we simply want to 
hold the set value and set the current value which will be button dot value now we need to change the background color of the selected button so we can do that using conditional styling in the press button we can provide conditional styling using this curly braces background color so if the value which is the currently selected one it's similar to the value to what we have in the button then we can change the background color otherwise it will be transparent all right as you can see now we can toggle through all the buttons let's provide conditional styling in text as well change the color and we will use the same condition if it's the selected button then we can change the color to black otherwise it will be white all right we have successfully created our custom component called segmented buttons now let's talk about how are we going to store all our books in book cells so in the book screen we have integrated this drop down picker from which user can select any of the book cells available so whenever user click on any of the book cell we want two pieces of information to store in our state the first one is the book info and the second one is the book cell regarding the book it has title authors rating etc so we don't really need all of this information to store in our state because all this information is already available somewhere on the cloud once we have the book id we can always make request to the google books api to fetch the data so what we need to store is the book id itself and regarding the book self we created an enum for that so we can use that as the id of the book self so at the end we will have an array of object where each object will have two properties the first one will be the book id and the second one will be the book self id now there are two screens in our app which require to access this data the first one is the book self screen where we need to show all the books that are currently present in your book shelves. and the second one is the book screen so we need to show to the user that a particular book is present in your book self already or not so the solution is that we need to create some kind of central store that can be accessed by any part of your applications so there are a couple of solutions that we can use the first one is the context api which provided by react itself then there are some multiple libraries redux flux and justin and in this project we are going to use justin because it's easy to integrate and it comes with minimal setup so let's come back to the code editor open your terminal and do yarn add justin it will add justin in your project now go to the browser and search for justin You can go to the Justin demo website. Here they have a really simple example demonstrating how the Justin works. So it's in JavaScript, so you can select the TypeScript. It first import a create function from Justin. Then they have created a type called store. It has two properties. The first one is the count. It has type of number, and the second one is the simply a function. And then they have created a store the default value of the count is one and what they are doing is that they are taking the current value of the count and simply adding the one to it so it's basically an increment function so let's just copy this much go to your code editor we will create another folder called store Let's create a file called index.ts. Let's, let's paste this code. All right. Let's export it.
now the idea is that we can use this count variable and the increment function in any part of our application so let's go to the book screen and let us create a button all right title let's say increment all right let's import our store use store what it gives us is the increment function so we'll be use this function in on press event here we are doing this simply to understand how the stand actually works then we will modify it according to our needs all right let's search for any book and here is our button now this is the one part of our application now let's go to the book self screen and try to render the count variable here let's say we will use a text let's import it use to and let's destructure the count and we will show this count over here all right as you can see we are calling the function in book screen but we are showing the count variable in another screen so let us see if it works let me press on increment multiple times if we go back if we go back to the book cell screen here you can see the value is 6 but our default value were 1 so it indeed works so let's now modify it according to our needs now let's make the changes first of all go to the book self screen and remove the logic that we have added remove the button from the book screen as well all right now let's make changes to this store let's create the type we will have books and for the type let's go to the type folder and whenever we add a book in our book cells uh, our array will have an object and this object will have two properties book id and the book self id so i'm going to create an interface for that let's name it ibook self you can create a type book id will be of type string and book self id will come from this enum so we can use the book selves all right in this store it will be an array of i book self let's create a function for the add book now whenever we add a book in our book self we need two things first is the book id which will be of type string and the second one is the book self id of type book self enum all right initially it will be an empty array now let's provide the definition for our add book as i said it will take two arguments book id and book self id we want to make changes to the books here we can use the javascript spread operator state dot books and we will add another object that will be book id and book self id now let me save this so what we really did is that we are merging the new book to the array that we already have so we can use this method in our book screen
so let's call let's actually call this use book cells it's more meaningful name so right in the book screen if you hover down we have this select book cell go to the select book cell here we need to call this book book cells here we can call the function of add book all right now we need to pass the book id from book screen to this component select book cell so let's create an interface for that first let's say props and create an interface it will take the book id from book screen let's give the type of string And let's destruct it over here. Book ID. Now in the book screen, we need to pass the book ID. Now book ID will be the ID coming from the data, or you can pass the book ID from here. We have the id in data as well and we have the book id in the route as well let me save this all right now let's use this in a function here you can pass another prop on change value so whenever the user changes the value from the drop down it will trigger this prop it will give us the value that we have over here so let's name it book self id And we can call the function add book. It expect a book ID and the book self ID. All right. Currently, it's giving us this TypeScript error. It will happen if you are using the enum. So you need to type past it for that. We can do as and then provide book cells. So we are passing book self ID as the enum book cells. All right. Now let's go to the book cell screen. Here we need to show all the books that are present in our book cells. So currently, uh, let's just display it in a text. And we can use the same hook over here. This book cell hook. And we can use the books array. Since it's an array, we need to stringify it. All right. Now, if you visit your app, let's search for any of the book. Let's say clean code. Let me add it to the read. Let's just add this one as well. All right. If I go to the book cell screen, as you can see, we are having this array. It has two objects and each object has book ID and the book self ID. Now let's use this data and show the list of books here. We can use the same component book item, but this book item component expect all the data regarding the books to be passed on. And currently we don't have the data. We only have the book ID. So for each book ID, we need to make a separate request to the Google Books API. Then we will fetch the data and then we can use the component for that let's create a new component called book self item import react and let's export a react component the type of the props will be ibook self that we have already created Here, let's destructure it. We will require the book ID.
All right, now we can use the use book hook to make request to the Google Books API. It expects a book ID. We will get the data, loading state for the is fetching and the error. All right. So if we are still fetching the data, we can simply return. Activity indicator we can provide the color if we encounter any error we will simply log it let's use text for that finally if we have the data We will use the book item component. We will pass the data. Let's use this spread operator. Let me save this. Bookshelf. All right, let me save this. Now go to the bookshelf screen. Remove this text. Now we can use the flat list component. As we have used the flat list component in the home screen, we can pass the data. It will be books in this case. Then the render item. It gives us the item. Then we can use the book self item. right we need to manually import it we can pass the item let's import go to self item from All right, let me remove this text. Let me save this. Let's provide the key extractor. In this case, the book ID will be our key. Let's provide some styling. Let's do padding. 15 get 5 let's also provide the item separator component we will use divider let me save this all right if we go to the bookshelves as you can see we are seeing our books let me add more same at time all right let's say currently reading As you can see, the book is added. Now, the problem is that currently it's showing all the books regardless of what bookshelf we are on. So, let's fix that. We can just use a filter. It will give us the book. And we want to show the books which has the book self id equal to the selected book self. All right, let me save this. Now on the read, we have link code. Currently reading, we have make time. And we also have one in the want to read. Now uh, we have the specific book in our want to read bookshelf. If I click on that, you can see the 
the drop down picker still showing the select bookshelf placeholder despite having this book in our bookshelf so let's fix that go to the select bookshelf let me move the software props here we can destructure the books as well let's declare a variable called book and let's use the javascript find method and we will find if the book id is already present we can compare it to this book id all right now we can provide the default value as book dot book self id so if we already have this book in our bookshelves then we will get the object back and we are passing the bookshelf id as a default value to the value state and if the book is not present then the book will be undefined then we will be passing the undefined and in that case it will be showing the placeholder which is the select bookshelf so let's go to the app and if i click on this now you can see the default value is want to read if i go to the read we have this clean code book in our read bookshelf if i click on this you can see it's showing that we have this book in our read. Let's search for the book that we don't have in our book cell. Let's edit book. As you can see, it's showing the default placeholder. Now let me load this app. All right. Let me search for a book. Let's say clean code. Now, if I add this book in read book cell and i again select the drop down picker and add it to currently reading ideally it should update the bookshelf id to this book but if we go to the bookshelves you can see we have this book in read as well and we have this book in currently reading as well and that is happening because we are still calling the add book function no matter what the user chooses so go back to the store and let's add another method called update book let me just uh, copy this because the signature will be the same update book it will take the book id for the book that we want to update and the new bookshelf id here let me also copy this all right now what we want to do we will map through to the books let's call it book here first we need to find the book that we are interested to update so let's say if book dot book id matches to the book id that we are passing over here then we want to return an object that object will have all the properties of this book and we only even need to change the book self id so we will pass the new book self id and for all the others we need to pass the book as it is let me save this let me change this to update book all right As you can see we are first mapping through the array and we are finding the book that we are interested to update and we are changing the bookshelf id to the new bookshelf id that we are passing in this function and for all the other object we are simply returning the book object all right let's go to the select bookshelf here destructure the update book and we can call this function conditionally so if the book is already present then we can call the update book we can pass the book id and the bookshelf id as bookshelves and if the book is not present then we will simply call the add book all right let me save this let me reload this app let's search for book let's say deep work let me add to the read 
and if I go to the book cells, you can see we have this book in read. And if I select the currently reading, you can see the book is gone from the read. And if we select the current reading, the book is here. All right, so the update group function works perfectly fine. Now let's add an option to delete the book as well. So go to the bookshelf item. Here, instead of rendering the book item directly, we will first render a view. Here we have rendered the book item. Pass the prop. Here let's create a button. All right. Let's use the icon from the active vector icons. Let's search for delete. All right, we can use this one from material community icons. Import icon from React Native Vector icons. Slash material community icons. And let's use the icon here. Name is delete. Let's provide the size. Let's say 30. Let's say color will be red. All right. If you look at it, we have our button over here. Let's provide some styling to the entire view. Let's create the style set for that. container let's make them in the same row so the flex direction will be row align item will be center justify content will be space between all right all right let's go to the book item and here in the container style, we can do flex one so that it takes the only space available. All right. Let's max this page this as well. All right. In the bookshelf item, let's provide some gear of 10, let's say. All right. We have this button over here now. Let's go to the store. Here, let's create the signature for remove book. It will take the book ID of type string. All right, let us just copy this and change the name remove book. It will only take the book ID. Here we will just filter out the book ID. Let's name it book. Book ID. All right. We will have all the books except the one that we are passing the book ID here from. All right. Let's go to the bookshelf item. Here, yeah, let's call the use book self soap and let's destructure the remove book. Now, on the pressable, we can provide the on press event and pass the book ID. All right, if I go to the app, if I click on the deep work, let's add it to read, let's add another book. All right, now let me go to the bookshelves. 
we have these two book over here if i press on delete it's get deleted now let's try to add some books let's search for clean code let me add this to read atomic habits let's add another one all right now let's go to the book cells and here we have our data so if i reload this app or you can consider a scenario where user closed this app and reopens it again now if we go to the book cells as you can see we lost our data and that is happening because we are only using a state to store our data and whenever the user reopens the app they will lose their data so now it's time to store them locally as well so that they don't lose their data and we are going to use react native async storage for that so search for react native async storage all right here is the package let's go to the github repo and here is the documentation we can use the yarn command to install it and paste the command while recording this course i'm using the version 1.23.1 .1. so if you follow this course in the future uh, make sure to check that all right now move to the macOS folder and do pod install don't forget this step it's very important all right now let's go back to the browser and go to the usage here they have given a couple of examples that we can use to store data in async storage the first one if we want to store a string perhaps but we are interested in object because we are storing the books array so let's copy this go to your store here after the type definition we can just paste the data let's change it to sync with local storage it will take books and the type will be ibook self of array all right so first we need to stringify the books array and then we can use the async storage package don't forget to import it at the top all right we need to provide some kind of key because we'll be using this key to fetch the data later on let's provide books all right let me save this now whenever user uh, make any changes into the book cells we need those changes to be reflected locally as well so what we will do is that we will call this sync with local storage function inside of each of these functions so for that let's need we need to modify this so let's do that let's just delete all of this all right let's use the set function it will give us the state let's create new array called updated books and our new array after that we will call this function With the updated books lastly we will return the new books array all right let me save this all right let's make the same changes in the remaining two methods and let me delete everything
we are just rewriting the same logic because we want to call this function inside of each of the function Here we will call the sync with local storage function with the upgrade books. Lastly, return the books. Let me save this. All right. Here as well. Set state we'll do the same this one equal to book id We will pass this in sync with local storage function and return the object. Let me save this. All right. Now we also need to create a function to fetch the data from the local storage. So for that, let's create signature here. Let's name it load from storage. It's an async function, so it will return a promise. All right. Let's create the definition here. Now, if you go back to the documentation, here we have the example for reading the data. So let's just copy this. Paste it over here. Let me save this. So first we need to get item. Remember we gave the key of books. So we will use the same key over here. Remove this. So if our JSON value is not null, that means that we have data in our local storage so that we can create an array called books. And we need to parse it. JSON value. Now we'll use the set function and store the in the books. All right. Now we need to call this function whenever user opens the app for the first time. So for that, go to the app.tsx file. We can use the use effect hook. Import it from the app. In the app, let's call the use book cells. In this structure the load from storage function is effect we will pass the empty array as the independency because we only want to call it once let's call the load from storage function here let me save this all right we are good to go let's search for deep work let me add it read let's search for clean code let me also add this now if we go to the book cells we have these two books in our read segment if i reload the app and i again go to the book cells you can see we are still having our data so we are successfully storing the data in the local storage and getting back from there 
now it's time to implement our ai feature so that user can generate the book summary so let's create a custom component for that in the src folder create a new file called book summary all right let's render a button And let's return a pressable. We'll have a text in between them. And let's provide the text AI summary and export it. All right, let's go to the book screen. Here, after the description, we can render the book summary component. All right. Let's create some styles. Style set dot create. All right, let's create button. and button text let's provide the style here and here button text let's style our button first let's provide some padding horizontal let's say 20 padding vertical of 10 let's provide the background color Let me see. All right. Let's do align cell texta text art so that it only takes the width required. All right. In the button text, let's increase the font size to 25. All right. Let's say 18. Maybe decrease it to 15. Let's provide the color black. All right, let's provide some font weight of 500. All right, so whenever user click on this AI summary button, we want this button to be replaced with the summary of this book. So for that, we'll be using Google's generative AI. So come to the browser and search for Gemini AI API. Go to the documentation go to the quick start guide and here make sure to select the node.js first let's install the sdk copy the package name do yarn add and paste the package name here now we require to get an api key so let's click on that Click on create API key. Now, if you don't have any project, uh, you will see a button over here to create a new project. I already have multiple projects, so let me select from that. Let me select this and create an API key. Copy this. Don't disclose it to anyone. And we'll be using the environment variable for that. So in the root of your project create a file called .env here let's name it api key let me paste this now to process the api key in our project we need to add another package let's search for react native n or env however you pronounce it All right, copy this command.
Now here we need to make some changes in our bubble file. So go to the bubble file in a project bubble.config.js. All right. Now copy this much. And paste it over here and save it. All right, we are good to go. Go back to the documentation. Now, first we need to import the package. So let me just copy this and go to your hooks folder. We'll be creating a new hook. Let's name it use AI. All right. export it all right let's import the package at the top google generative ai now copy this much here we are specifying the model that we'll be using and here is the function. So let us copy this in our custom mode. We can paste it over here. Delete the prompt. We will be providing prompt over here. So this custom hook will take one argument, which will be prompt. It will be a type string. Let's rename the function. Let's name it generate content it's an async function all right and we will just return the text all right we are just uh, calling the function generate content from the model passing the prompt and let us use use query First, we need to pass the query key. In this case, it will be prompt. Let's pass the query function. We want to call this generate content. All right. And we want to trigger it manually, so enable will be false. Let me save this. All right, we are good to go. Come back to the box summary. So to generate the summary for any of the book, we need two things. First is the title of the book and the second is the authors. So let's create an interface for that. First will be the title, which will be your type string. Second is the authors, which will be an array of string. All right, now let's go to the book screen. Here we can pass the title. All right, we have title in our data. So we will pass like this data dot volume info dot title and we will pass the authors data dot volume info dot authors. Let me save this. Instead of the question mark, let's provide the exclamation mark to tell that there will be data. All right, in the book summary, we can finally call the hook. Let's first destructure our props. Title and authors. Let me save this. Now let's create the prompt that we'll be passing. All right. 
generate a book summary generate a detailed book summary of the book title then we provide the title by and then we provide the authors so authors dot we will join them providing a comma all right we can also use the html tags use proper html tags to format the summary let, let me save this now let's call the hook use ai and pass the prompt we will get the data is fetching and the error so if we are still fetching the data we will show an indicator activity indicator let's provide the color if we encounter any error let's just log it use text for that and finally when we have data we don't want to show the button to the users we want to replace it with the book summary so if we have data we will return now we can go to the book screen again since our book summary will have html tags we can use the same package paste it over here here instead of description we will pass the data we need to import the package as well Is window dimension we'll use the width out of it all right let me save this now let's restructure the refetch function so that we can actually call it here provide the on press event let's call the function like this we need to await it all right go to your app now let's search for any of the book let's say deep pop all right click on the button we are getting the loading state As you can see we are getting this really nice summary it also has some html formatting since we are using the package all right let's go back let's search for another book let's say thing code and generate the summary for this book as you can see we are successfully getting the summary generated by ai so our app is finally complete we have created multiple custom components and custom hooks as well we have learned how you can integrate google books api we work with third-party libraries like react navigation just and tensor query as well and we are storing the data locally as well so i hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching it till the end